So lately I've been fielding a lot of questions on Discord, specifically about skinning or rigging a car body for automation, the car company tycoon game. In fact, so many questions, I felt it was about time for me to address them with a dedicated tutorial. So pull up to the bar and lean back, because you're about to do a body shot with Hard Rooster. All right, so I guess the first thing we're gonna wanna do is um, make some backups. First thing you should always do before you make any major changes to your car is, is make some backups. And you can just, I create a lot of these folders and it's easy to do, just come up here, grab a folder. I've already got one made for the car. Just add an extra one, name it backup, whatever. Right, grab your car, make a duplicate of it with Shift D and drag it in your backup folder. Maybe rename it backup, go ahead and hide it. And that's it, that's all you gotta do. Next thing we're going to want to do is apply the appropriate modifiers. And over here you can see I've got a bevel modifier and a couple shrink wrap modifiers and I need to get these applied. Normally you would apply modifiers in order, however in this case the mirror modifier is not going to really be a problem. So I can go ahead and skip it and I'll apply my bevel modifier, I'll apply my shrink wrap modifiers, go ahead and turn the bevel or the uh, mirror modifier back on. We can check it out and see everything is all set to go. My bevels are all done, like right there. I can highlight everything. I can go ahead and get rid of the bevel weights. Don't need those anymore. And that's it. All right, the third thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna actually want to remove, either delete some of these weights. So I use these weights for the shrink wrap modifier and I have seam pulls and all this kind of stuff. Um, what we can do with this, you can see this one has a shrink weight of 1.0. What I want to do is get this down to zero. You, know, you can just delete them if you want, or we can do what I'm going to do here. I'm going to select them all like this. I'm going to set the weight to zero. I'm going to go ahead and assign a weight of zero. I'm going to do the same thing with shrink. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to set the weight to zero. I've already set and assign. So now when I click on this, you'll see the weight is zero. And I want these weights messing up the weight of my car. However, in future variants, I'm going to do a two-seater and a wagon. I may want to use the shrink wrap again, so I don't want to get rid of the vertex groups. I'm going to save them for now. I'll get rid of all of these later when I'm done. All right, so the next step is we're going to go ahead and create our armature in bone structure. So let's go ahead and just hide the car because I don't need to see that. I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm just going to grab myself a new armature. Now to make life easier for myself, I'm going to come over here to the data tabs, right? I'm going to highlight this and I want to set the bone in front and that will make it so I can see the bone in front of the car like this, right? And I'm also going to tick on names, kind of a personal preference thing, but I want to actually see the name of my bones. And this one is our bone root. So I'm going to hit this underscore or just space root. And you can see it does that. You can see the name of it. All right, I'm going to actually tab in edit mode real quick. Shrink it down, it doesn't need to be so big. All right, and then I'm gonna make a duplicate. Scoot, scoot it out here on the Y somewhere. Let me see the car real quick. That's a little far forward. It doesn't need to be over there. I'll put it right there. Hide the car again. I'm gonna go ahead and jump over here and let's uh, rename this bone uh, to front something or another. I guess we'll do a front length bone for now. Okay, that should work. And now I actually want to parent this bone to that bone. So what I'm gonna do is this one is highlighted. I'm going to shift, highlight that one, hit control P and keep offset. And now you'll see the dashed line from the bottom of the child bone, right? So if I go into pose mode and I move this one around, it moves independently. And if I move this one around, it moves both of them. So that's how you know that this one is the child and this one is the parent. And that's what we want. All right, so the fifth thing we want to do is make the car visible again. And let's jump back over here and come over here to the modifiers and we're going to add an armature modifier like so and I'm going to select the armature that I just created which is down here um, to be uh, the thingamadingy right and now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a couple vertex groups we're going to add the bone space root it's going to be exactly the same name as our root bone I'm going to tab into the car select every vertice set the weight to one and I'm going to assign that to the bone root. So now the bone root and every vertice on the car is weighted to one. Now this group one here, we're gonna name this front length, front length, to be the same exact name as this bone here. And so now we have our first two vertex groups that we need to start skinning with. All right, the next step is one that trips up a lot of people and that is setting up the brush. So I'll try to slow down a little bit here. Um, let's jump into weight paint mode and we can take a look at our brush 
I'm going to come down here to tool. So right over here in those tabs on the right side, you'll see tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the strength of the brush to one and we'll set the weight to whatever we need the weight to be. In this case, I'm going to start with eh, maybe 0.2. So that way I'll add 0.2 weight. That might be a little high. Maybe I'll do something like 0.15. That should be a pretty decent amount of weight. I'm going to change the blend type to add. So now we're going to be adding. So when I have front length selected, I'm going to be adding weight to the front length vertex group that the bone will drive. Okay. We have some options to, that we want to come down here. So we're going to open up this little options menu. I'm going to untick this front faces only. I'm going to turn on 2D fall off. And I am, and this is really important, I'm going to turn on auto normalize. This will do math for me. As I add weight, it will subtract it from the root bone. Now all I have to do to make sure that happens is lock the weights of everything else. The only things that should be unlocked when you're weight painting is the bone root and whatever bone you happen to be weighing. In this case, it will be the front length. When we're done with front length, we will lock it so that we can't take any weight from it any longer. Moving on down the stack here, we need to open up, not the stroke, but the fall off. And I'm going to set my fall off to this guy here, which is basically anything in the circle is gonna get an equal amount of weight. And then coming down, we don't need to do anything with display. We don't need to do anything with symmetry. We can open up options and I'm going to go ahead and unify the strength so that when I switch to a subtract brush, I get the same value settings that I have here. And that's all you really have to do to set up your brush. All right, now we have set up everything we need in order to start weight painting. The first thing I'm going to do before I begin is I'm gonna actually move this bone. And I'm gonna do that in, um, in uh, pose mode. So we'll hit uh, control tab and that should switch us to pose mode. Otherwise, you can just come up here and you can change as necessary. And I'm just gonna move this guy out, eh, maybe about that far. Okay, let's get back into object mode. I'll go to the car now. I'm gonna kind of figure out what do I want to move when I move this bone this way, how much of the front of this car do I want to come with it? All right, so I'm gonna go into the side view here and I think I'm gonna select, let's go ahead and select this down to here. I don't want any of these selected. And I'm probably going to want to influence a bit more of the front of the car. So I'm going to grab a bit more of the car like that. Okay. So now that I have this all selected, let me go ahead and run into, maybe I should move these guys as well. This may take a little bit of trial and error. You'll have to play with it yourself and see how it goes. So I'm going to go into um, weight paint mode and you can see it you know, looks about the same, right? Well, what I want to do is come up here and I need to click this little box in the upper left corner to turn on masking. Now I will only add weight to the highlighted vertices. Now, as long as I'm down here in tool, I've got add. I've already set this up to be 0.15. I am on the front length. All I got to do is click it once and you'll see the car move. Okay. So that might be, um, more than I want to move all the rest of this to. Well, that's fine. Well, let me come down here to subtract and let's change this to 0.01. And let me change the brush a little bit smaller and we can actually bring some of this back. And bring some of that back. And maybe bring some of that back a little bit until we get something that looks a little bit more even. Everything should look pretty smooth. Let me move that one back one more. The idea is we just want to maintain our reflections here. So let me go jump back into object mode. Then I can select the bone, hit control tab to get into pose mode. Let's go ahead and clear the user transforms. And let's grab this thing. And I actually want to constrain this guy on the Y axis. So I need to actually lock out these guys here. Now you see that I'm leaving Z free, but it's moving on the Y. That's because it's the bones axis. And this way is Y on the bone or Z, whatever. <laughs> this way is the Z axis on the bone. But so don't get lost too much lost. Just pay attention to which number is changing and lock the rest. And now it's easy to see. And we've got our uh, bone influencing the front of the car. Next thing I want to touch on is um, doing the left-right symmetrizing. And if you take a look at the car, we're still just half a car, right? Because we have the mirror modifier. 
You can turn the mirror modifier off. You don't have to look at it, but you want to see the mirror modifier. I like to look at the whole car as I'm working on it. So how does that work with left-right bones, right? Well, there's some naming conventions and some stuff to worry about, but it's really pretty simple and straightforward. So I'm going to grab this front length bone. Let me go into top view so that I don't lose elevation. And I'm going to hit Shift D and duplicate it. And if you take a look, you can see it's got the dotted line. It's already parented. So all I have to do is stick this bone out here somewhere next to the wheel well. That's a fine enough location for it. And I'm going to change the name of the bone to R dot um, arch. That looks about right. So that is actually, hold on a second. No, it's going to be R, R, <laughs> R dot front arch because I'm going to have an R dot rear arch as well. So that makes a little more sense. Um, now, uh, all I, it's what I have to do is right click on this and I'm going to hit symmetrize and you can see I have an L dot front arch now. Now there's different ways to do these naming conventions. Um, you could find them on the blender manual. I just happen to stick with R dot and L dot. So now to come into the car, we're going to add our two more vertex groups, right? Because we need an R dot front arch and we need an L dot front arch. Now we're going to remember, we're going to lock the bones we're not using. We just want to paint the R dot front arch. Now, again, let's go ahead and move this bone. Now I'm going to pay attention to, you can see it's actually locked already. I'm going to unlock everything. I want to change my lock parameters. There we go. Just so that it makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to move this guy out about here. Let me see. How do I want to move this? this out here. Probably want to grab this, hit a plus sign. Uh, I don't know, we'll see how I want to do this here. Something like... Let me go to object mode. <laughs> we'll get there. There we go. Now that's obviously really ugly and uh, I'm going to work on this some more but what you should notice is if I move over to the left I need to actually change this again I forget which way is which there, but there you can see go ahead and lock these up there we go you can see that the left side is working on the left side and the right side is working on the right side which is the point of this video never mind the ugly uh, morphs I will fix that uh, later <laughs> All right, switching car bodies here to one that I have that's actually done. Um, the, the last thing to note here is that you can use the same armature for every variant. Here I've got 16 variants of this particular body. It all uses the same armature. So if I grab this one, you'll see it pulls the front of the short bed truck. It pulls the front of the long bed truck. It pulls the front of the SUV. Um, so as long as the vertex groups are all named the same, as they should be, that's why you skin the first variant. That way when you make copies, that everything copies onto the next variant so that you have everything skinned and you might just have to do a little bit of touch up. And you also don't have to worry about unused stuff. Like there's this whole line of bones that I have up here that are specific to the pickup trucks, right? So like I have a wheel well width bone and I have a bed depth bone but you don't have that on an SUV. Don't worry about it. As long as you're not using any vertex groups, you can keep the bones. It's not gonna hurt anything. That way you can just use the same armature for every variant you have, everything that you need, just make in one armature and use it universally through all of them. Okay, when it comes to setting up your bounds level, um, it's basically the exact same thing as setting up your car. You can use it, you can leave it as a separate um, object. It doesn't have to be the same object as your car because you can take, like, let's say these bounds boxes and let's move it down here. When you get ready to export, you're going to take the armature, just select everything, and you'll export everything, and it'll all go into one FBX file. Um, so setting up the bounds boxes is basically the same thing as setting up the car. You're going to apply the arm, you're going to add the armature modifier. You're going to add a bone root, a front length, a front arch, or, you know, all the same different stuff. Uh, you actually only need to add 
the um, the vertex groups that actually move the bounds boxes. So if the front of the car gets longer, that will cause the lower front bounds to actually get longer. If I make the cabin longer or shorter, that will change the cargo or the um, I'm sorry, the cabin bounds volume. It might move the dash cam. It might move the driver cam around. And so you'll want to skin those things, and you only have to skin. Those, uh, th those particular parts. You don't have to do the wheel wells and stuff. They're not going to make the, the car fatter or anything like that, generally speaking. I mean, you can if you want. It's up to you, personal preference, however involved you want to get with skinning your car. Just keep in mind, if you're going to do uh, left-right stuff on your bounce boxes, you're going to need to cut them in half and mirror them and do all the same naming conventions just like we covered already on the car body. All right, great. Well, that will wrap this one up. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and I will catch you on the next one.